I just want to go over two setups of which I am currently focusing on in my trading and that is the bounce short from Dux's DVD, Steven Dux and also the overextended gap down those are the two setups I'm trading currently but I have no positions right now also I'm studying the gap up short so first thing I want to do is go over a bounce short setup and my morning watch list today here's AEZS I've been stalking this for a few days waiting for it to have some sort of excessive spiking into a resistance level on the two year chart because that resistance level has volume this volume right here so first I'm gonna explain the bounce short setup what it is is you have to look for sort of a run-up day with excessive spiking and the volume has to be significantly higher than its previous trading volume and the reason for this is more people are trading it during this this time right here so this resistance level is more likely to hold as a resistance due to all the bag holders that are in from these levels so how you figure that out is we zoom in here first and you see that this day had 61.4 million volume you can see it right here the volume changes when i highlight the candle 61.4 million volume right there and it topped out at 2.8 you can see the high over here this day 48 0.5 million volume and it topped at 329. So our areas of interest right off the bat are going to be 2.8 and 3.29 because these high volume traded days topped out at those levels making it significantly higher odds for shorting. So one thing is when you're seeing this and it's pre-market so it'll still be down here it's kind of difficult to know is it going to spike or not. So what you look for is the volume over here and that's why you're interested in it. So before it even spikes, you already know that your ultimate risk is going to be 325 or 329. That's where that those two days topped out. That's your ultimate risk. Unless today's volume gets overwhelming and it becomes higher than the previously traded volume resistance. So it would have to go over about 100 million volume adding these two days together for it to significantly break those levels. The reason why you don't short on this first green day is because it only spiked from... 140 to 209 in the morning and then it topped in the t in the 220 area this is a significant run-up but it's only about 64 percent and how you figure that out is so at this level let's say you're looking at it at 189 and you want to know how high odds is this entry here if you want to start shorting here so first thing you're going to do if you're not good at math like me you're going to take out your calculator and you're going to do 1.88 minus the 1.41 equals and then you're going to divide that by 1.41 so that it is a 33 percent run from the open and the reason why you're not shorting that is okay 33 percent yeah the stock moved but it has much more upside considering the growing volume that came in and when it started holding support and then more volume came in this is a sign not to short sure there was some profit opportunity but also it's not up enough the volume is still there let it run be patient and when it gets near your risk level that's where you start in so my plan this morning AEZS see how it's before the market open I'm still watching it I didn't care about it this day because it didn't spike enough I didn't care about it this day because yes it gapped down but for an overextended gap down it needs to be overextended and from here to here is about 64 percent that's not overextended yet Okay, for some stocks it is, and it might fail, but it's better to just wait for the higher odds setup and just be patient. So this day, it ended up squeezing shorts that were a little over aggressive that jumped in that gap down, thinking it would fade, ended up holding support, and here, now it's holding support all day. But I wrote the plan early morning, 6, 6 a.m., so around here, 6.27 a.m., and the reason for that, why I'm still looking at that 325 level is because of that volume again. So here, let it run and then look to start in short near 280, looking to add near three with ultimate risk on 325. I didn't just throw out these numbers and, and say randomly, let me start short here. What I'm looking at is, so 325, that's my resistance. I want to get in with minimal risk. So I'm gonna let the stock spike and I feel that if it gets to the 280s, it would be overextended enough in which you can start shorting and start shorting partials so very small here in the 280s and your goal is to let it run more and that's that's kind of weird because you're shorting right no you want it to go higher and you want to try to get your average as close as possible to this resistance level so that your odds are increased of winning so when you get in that 280s you're, you're going to take one sixth or one eighth of your intended position size and then when it gets to three you can add one sixth to it you can add 
like a half position, but you shouldn't be full size yet until you know that it's going to top out. So you want it to hit near that resistance. Maybe you'll start failing at three and then you want to see a hard crack off the high intraday so similar to this, but it wasn't overextended enough. Once you get that hard crack, after it being overextended, you can start shorting the bounce to get a higher odds. You can add into that bounce, and then your new risk is that high if it's at near this resistance level. So once once it tops out intraday at the at the resistance level, which it didn't reach today, that's where your new risk is, and you can size in comfortably because now all the bag holders their selling pressures to start coming in. So that's AEZS and it still didn't set up and I'm still going to be watching it for Monday because if it does spike quick enough, that's a good potential short. And what significantly increases your win rate is for this specific pattern for bounce short is you wait for a parabolic spike. You don't want a short grinding action. You wait for a, an excessive spike with increasing volume and that's where you look to start in with that small position like i said but if it starts grinding up and holding all day and then it like starts getting back to that high and the volume's increasing intraday just get out and wait for the next play if it's not setting up correctly that's completely fine sls why i was watching that it's a back burner for overextended gap down it needs to get overextended first obviously so back burner means i'm not looking to trade it anytime soon but the reason why I was looking at it, yesterday it had this spike, okay? Sure, there was some volume, but here's this volume day, 17.6 million volume, and this day was starting to overwhelm it, so that's that's your first indication that, you know, it's not really time for it to start topping yet. But now it failed, okay? This is no trade because it failed. What I was looking for is a multi-day run-up, so ideally you want this, this level to break so that it can get overextended, maybe two, three days, and... Hopefully you get that like surge in volume and you get a day like this. And when you get that day, you, that's where all the bag holders start getting trapped in it. So I would say maybe to four, it could go to six. You never know where it's going to top, but that's why you're waiting on the overextended gap down for it to get overextended first. And then when it gaps down or has a sign of weakness into the close like this and then opens around here, you can wait for that spike into the resistance to short. But not yet because look it's up from like 1.2 1.3 to 1.9 that is not enough to increase your odds of shorting and it's basically grinding up now it's holding support it's really not a good play right now but if it does get volume and goes for a few more days then it's better odds to start shorting when it gaps down and shows weakness you can short into the most consolidation area of the previous day I'm just using this as an example remember you don't want to be shorting on the stock that went from 1.2 to 1.9 you look for, let's say it had this weakness and it topped at four and dropped like this. Next day, you're going to want to look, okay, did it consolidate here? In this case, there wasn't much volume here. So um, ideally, you'd want volume like this and having a higher resistance level like this. So when you get that morning pop, you can start shorting into the most consolidation area where it starts to consolidate a lot. And you don't want this little volume. You should kind of want bigger volume as the resistance. Because the bigger the volume is, the bigger chance it's not going to break it. So that's where you take your starter. And your ultimate risk on that starter is high of that consolidation area. So in this 190 area, 193, low 190s. That's your risk. And your plan is to add. But next to your risk. And then when it rejects high and starts showing you that new risk level, that's when you move risk there. But again didn't run enough so I didn't trade this either and with this you're not really looking at specific daily levels because there's not much volume traded at these levels and they're way up there so it's not really relevant to the, the current stock price right now but I mean these bag holders from these two days will be selling into into these pops obviously but you don't want to be shorting next to this consolidation it it's just such limited downside it's really not worth it because look, if the stock drops 20 cents, you're going to make 5 cents of it. It's not worth it. Here's SOLO. And the reason why I was looking at this. So look, this is, as you can see, it shows 2 years. And this is obviously a few months, like 3 months. The reason why is because there's no history from before this. So it could be a recent IPO or an uplisting, delisting, whatever. I don't, I don't care. The point is, people were shorting into this level, but they, there's no volume here. So... That's why it broke it very easily. They got squeezed, and as soon as they get out, it goes back in their favor. 
So that's why you just shouldn't short for no reason. But um, I'm going to I'm gonna go over this a little more in detail in a second on this day. But first, I want to go over why I was looking at it today. Look at that. 21.8 million volume. Again, you see it right there. And it topped at 748. This day, you're interested in it because of the volume already right off the bat. What I was looking for here is I wanted to start into the 470 to 490 area. The reason for that, now this is where it's going to get a little more interesting because you do have that overhead resistance with a ton of volume traded. And to better gauge where the volume was traded, you can use a wider time frame like a 5 minute chart. You could see that on this big volume day, the volume kind of clustered in this area and it clustered during the morning obviously. What you're looking to do is, okay, where's this, this is the most consolidation area basically, in this area here. You want to start shorting in this area towards the lower end of the range, but very small. So I was looking 470 to 490. My goal was to start in shorting right here. And that's because, see this consolidation area and the volume. And then let's zoom in on that day so you can get a better idea of what's going on. So this is a five minute chart. Here there's some volume traded, here there's some volume traded and they topped in the same area. So what's this range? 460 to 530s and this also could have been part of it because you have all these you have this volume traded here and if you think of it once it cracked this area here in the 480s that's it it never reclaimed it that, that was over for the stock so this is a significant level and you can see that all the bag holders because of the volume there's a lot of bag holders a ton of bag holders stuck in here and they'll be willing to sell into any spike and the reason why they could have gotten stuck also is buying this high of day breakout not realizing that the stock is already up over a hundred percent and that is a low odds entry here so those longs got trapped as you could see some some panicked out here but the main thing you want to take away from this is okay the volumes trading in this area 560s to the 460s so that dollar a share has been a really big problem area for this stock so what I'm looking for is to start in the 470s because it's right here because you never know, is it going to get to your risk or not? That's why you take that small position. And then if it starts to go up more to the 5 to five area, um, as you can see by my plan, I was looking to start in 470 to 490, and my ultimate risk was 565. So you can see why my ultimate risk was 565. This is where that bounce topped, at, topped out. So this is where my ultimate risk is. That's worst case scenario. I'm cutting it there and um till i can move my risk to 550 and the reason for that is because here was the next next uh resistance area that proved you know to be fatal for this stock so that's why my new risk would be that area um and as you could see i split it up by priority and put the ideal start short price and ultimate risk for both plays so that once it gets to that level there's no emotions involved you just follow what you wrote down so the reason why I didn't short today is, oh, well, it didn't spike enough. And you don't want to short here because the limited downside. You make like 50 cents a share. If you, shot, if you short this morning spike, what are you going to make? 25 cents and 50 cents if you held all day. Like, that's not worth it. That's really risky. Um, and the potential for it to spike more is obviously very big, as you can see by this spike here. <laughs> You don't want to wake up in the morning short overnight and next thing you know it's at 7 and yeah, whatever you do after that. So what I want to go over for this day, how this day happened is first thing you want to do in the morning, let's go to the 2 minutes so we can see a little more detail here. I made a uh, more detailed video on Profitly on this specific uh, setup here and that's the gap up short. So there is actually a high odd setup to short into this kind of morning spike here it's riskier but there is a setup and there is opportunity and i'm going to explain uh briefly here but i'll put the link down down in the description where um i i went into real detail and how to make the calculations on when you should start shorting small and where you should add what your ultimate risk should be and how to manage the risk correctly, where to move it down, what signals to look for. So basically in the morning, this was about, it opened up about 133%. And people took that as, hey, let me short on the open because it has to come down, which is a fatal assumption. And 
what happened there. It gave a nice parabolic <laughs> straight from 520s to 740s. I don't know if you could hold for two bucks a share on a five dollar stock, but that's not really how you're supposed to trade. And that is a very low odds gambling setup right there. But what you do is you take the opening price, which was about 580, and that while it's spiking, like here, you know not to short because you're calculating how much percent is it over the open. So for typically for stocks um, between 2 million float to I'd say like 30 million float, they tend uh, to have a high odds um, shorting set up when the stock gaps up over a hundred percent and that's not the first and that's not the only thing you need and then after the open the spiking percentage has to be on average about 20 to 25 percent spiking after the market open for your initial starter entry and you don't know if the stock is going to top it at 40 percent or sometimes like on a rare occasion it'll go even 60 percent but that's why you start in with one sixth position and you wait for the certain indicators to tell you that hey it's time to add or it's time to get it off and yeah I'll, again I'll put that description down below and it's very detailed so if you want to watch it it will benefit okay so that's basically it solo and uh, AEZS are on my watch for Monday and how you find these stocks is you just go to the percent gainers and you look through them and you try to find ones in your float range and um, spiking and you look for the previous resistance. Uh, this is a, uh, yeah, that's not even something you should trade. I don't like this. There's really nothing new on this percent gainers for, for Monday and that's completely fine. You can look. Monday morning there might be new gainers up and uh, you look on the previous chart here you, you can see you don't need to look like five years back but you can see here there's no real heavy resistance volume this one traded 10 million shares you want over 10 million yeah but like that's not you don't want this chart you don't want to trade that um, so I'm just gonna go through it real quick and if you see this one you could see that this huge volume day was significantly uh, higher than any other day it's traded before and so that that tells you okay this level should be interesting let's zoom in and see what this is so 13.4 million volume and it topped at 669 you don't really want to like short here in the ones or twos and risk 669 and you also don't want to risk 239 or 328 because the volume's under 5 million and you want to look for over 10 million and the reason why is when it's under 5 million it is very easy for it to break uh, break those resistance levels especially if the volume starts overwhelming overwhelming previous volume so I mean this could still be a bounce short if some crazy stuff happens and it gets to the f fours five sixes then um, you know you can consider it but I, I doubt it's getting there that's why uh, this one particularly not interested um, oh, the reason why I am interested in AEZS, we went over that volume, see that? And it gave you that resistance. Solo, here's the volume, and it gave that resistance. But intraday, on the intraday scale, you don't want to risk the high of day of this day because you have these intraday levels that are significant consolidation areas which are less likely to break. And if it breaks your risk, you get out, you reevaluate for the next play. Um, thank you.